Pete Campos, senator from Las Vegas, is the man his Democratic colleagues hope assumes the mantle of President Pro Tem in the state Senate. The position impacts policy from both sides of the aisle as the Pro Tem can influence committee assignments. Influence in quotes there. I mean, he has everything on committee assignments. Now, the flow of bills as they head to the floor, of course. Now, with us to talk about all his chances and a whole lot more. From the Garrity Group PR and a former Senate Democratic staffer, Tom Garrity is back. From the Center for Civic Policy, our good friend Javier Benavidez returns. Executive Director of the New Mexico Foundation for Open Government, our old colleague Gwyneth Dolan. Very glad to have you back, Gwyneth. And Whitney Waite, our favorite from the days of yore of the Waite Company. She returns. It's no way of saying old. Also a former legislative staffer, but for House Republicans. Now, Tom, let me get started with you, as you recall. As you know well, because of the power that I just talked about a little bit there, the committee's committee, certainly this is what the Senate Pro Tem is going to mm -hmm. really wield influence on here. Some Republicans are not keen, it seems historically, about rubber stamping any Democrat to anything. Well, yeah. And so we have to play this out as it goes along to see if the votes are going to turn up or we're going to cobble together a block like Mr. Jennings did back when of Republicans to make this work. What's your sense of this? Well, I, I think that a lot of lessons have been learned. You know, the mm -hmm. days of the rubber stamp, while I think they were, you know, slim to none, I, I don't, they don't exist in this <laughs> environment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think Senator Campos is, is watching what happened to Senator Cisneros four years ago. Oh. And I think that he's, you know, nobody's taking anything for granted. Not that Senator Cisneros did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a very volatile environment. Within the Democrats, uh, you have the Northern Coalition, you have progressives, and you have the conservative Democrats. Mm -hmm. And trying to hold the coalition of those three groups together is very difficult on a good day. Right. Speaking of blocks, Gwyneth, it's interesting when you think about this. This would seem to be, and I think Mr. Keller will talk about him in a minute, Tim Keller, has made the point that this might be a good time actually to group together and stop making these these deals just to get these Senate high-level Senate positions that turn out to haunt Democrats down the road. Can this hold, though? Is it possible in this in this culture, this environment? I think they're feeling empowered, yeah. probably. They had, a, you know, a, a good election, and I think they're feeling uh, like they don't have to make so many deals right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm as interested as anyone to see what happens. I think Campos has the hair for it, certainly. <laughs> it's outstanding. <laughs> and in our legislature, leadership means outstanding hair. <laughs> Who's going to take over for Ben Lujan? How can you match that? I had not yeah. thought about that. Hair angle. That's, <laughs> a, that's a new one to me. Very interesting. It's, it's By the way, just to backtrack with Tom, yeah. when you mentioned that previous fight, that, that involved, in fact, previously mentioned Mr. Jennings. Yes, exactly Senator right. Jennings. That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, Mary Kay Papin, her name keeps showing up yeah. for very good reason. She was interested in the job. Mm -hmm. It did not happen. And she was asked before the convention if she would possibly be open to cobbling together some kind of coalition with Republicans. Mm -hmm. She said it was possible. Since then, she's saying she hasn't really said much of anything. What's your sense of that? Is that what she would, in fact, have to do to make this happen? Well, I think it's a very good possibility that you mm -hmm. might see something like that happen. There's still rumors of, a, you know, a coalition forming between Republicans and maybe a more do uh, moderate Democrat. Uh, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Senator Arthur Smith's comments that were in the paper today um, and covered yesterday uh, definitely raised some pretty important issues. Uh, he obviously is concerned that he won't get a re you know reappointed to the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. um, th there's there's concern that some of the more progressive and liberal groups are going to be pushing Senator Campos to make some changes. Um, Republicans mm -hmm. are not going to want to see uh, a liberal or progressive Democrat chairing that committee. It's very important. Um, so I think that there's still going to be a lot of things happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that I have a feeling it might. Uh, build up to a, a typical New Mexico situation where you talk and talk and talk and there's all these things going on and in the end it ends up exactly where you started. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that I happens, but she's definitely a possibility at this sure. point and sure. they continue to talk about it. Linda Lopez, she was in the running for it as well. Didn't, didn't, we don't know the votes, of course. It's a secret, secret amount of, of votes that you get. We don't know what happened there. Any sense of what she might do or might play a role in this moving forward? Well, hopefully she'll, uh, it, it's all together as one. She'll be one of the supporters of, uh, of not going coalition. Yeah. Um, she did, uh, she was part of the coalition back in 2008. Uh, and I think what we've learned and what's changed since then is now uh, members of the, of the Senate uh, Democrats know that mm -hmm. there will be consequences uh, for that, that uh, it limits the uh, amount of um, uh, solutions that can be put through the legislature. Uh, and that's what I love about Senator Keller and um, Senator Candelari. They're both young, progressive, uh, uh, impressive individuals, but there's also a lot of meat to what they uh, what they bring to the Senate. Uh, Senator Keller mm -hmm. uh, is great on finance issues. He's the uh, go-to guy when it comes to um, economic uh, policy mm -hmm. uh, in the Senate, and uh, it's just I think it's a good step forward for. Uh, 
for the Senate and, and bringing some real solutions to the desperate issues that New Mexico is facing and getting them to the governor's desk. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit early for this, but does anybody have a sense of what we can glean about the really? I'll start with you, Javier, on this one. The relationship between the governor mm -hmm. and Pete Campos. This is something, of course, we're going to have to watch closely as time goes by. Any sense of, of past history there and in, in, in any clues to the future? You know, uh, Senator Campos, um, I think people don't give him enough credit. Uh, he's a uh, college, uh, college president. Mm -hmm. He has a doctorate. Uh, he represents, I mean, he's unified the North. Um, and I think, you know, he's, he's uh, going to see the value of putting uh, forward some proposals that are going to get to the governor's desk and force uh, her to veto them, to take a stand. Yeah. Things like the minimum wage or early uh, childhood uh, funding from the permanent fund. So right. um, I think it's game on. Does that not imply, however, that you need a solid block of your own behind you to do those kind of things? You can't work that kind of stuff out, it seems to me, if you've got, you know, five, six Republican votes that you owe something to. Right, and then an issue like this comes up, you're going to, you know, get the governor on one. It, does that does that work? Do you know what I'm saying? You have to you have to be able to play with the people that helped you get the position, right? Not yeah, in the but that's not how it. Uh, <laughs> all right, right, the all right. She can veto anything she wants, anyways. It sure. doesn't matter, how, you know, how many votes or how much support there is in the Senate. But the, sure. the Senator Campos issue is going to be important because mm -hmm. um, the Reform New Mexico Now PAC um, actually supported. Uh, Senator Campos in mm -hmm. the primary. Uh, he was one of five senator, mm -hmm. Democrat senators mm -hmm. that they supported. And mm -hmm. the reason was is because he was very supportive on a couple of uh, key tax issues um, and, and I believe capital out, uh, outlay reform as well. So mm -hmm. I think that you're going to see a halfway decent relationship there um, between Senator Campos and uh, the governor's office, certainly kind of coming through the gates. Mm -hmm. um, but what is interesting is that if um, in supporting him and he was elected and then there is a change with Senator John Arthur Smith, what mm -hmm. will that do to the Senate? Uh, probably an unanticipated consequence I'm gonna guess sure well and you know when you look at you know the composition of the Senate and you know nobody knows exactly what the vote count was mm -hmm. I mean and but Capitol Report in their coverage of the event said that a coalition was going to be needed mm -hmm. to elect Senator Campos as the pro tem so if, if even a coalition is going to be needed you know within the Democrats that means there's probably nothing's going to be decided until the actual start of the legislature which sure. is interesting because mm -hmm. they're going to have to take care of all this business just moments before the governor goes up and gives her state of the state address. Right. That'll so all the drama will be across <laughs> the hall. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we'll stay with you, Tom. Senator Tim Keller is now the uh, Democratic whip. And uh, our colleague Dan Foley, of course, his previous days as a Republican whip. It's interesting to learn from him the whip's job in our, in our legislature. Mm -hmm. We all know what it is on paper. <laughs> However, there's a whole art to it that's really interesting. There is. Yeah. Well, you know, you, uh, and I think that, you know, uh, Senator Keller is, is a great choice uh, for that particular position. You know, he's going to rally the progressives. He's respected in the business community. He's just, he's just a, in a really, that's a really good choice. There are a couple of good candidates that ran for that as well. Mm -hmm. But in addition to getting all the votes in, it's somebody who works very closely with the Democrat um, you know, caucus chair mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that the, the policies are all moving forward. And sure. so, you know, uh, himself and then Senator Cantelaria, is, uh, you know, the two of them will uh, work very well hand in hand on this. Mm -hmm. Let's go there uh, next. Uh, <coughs> J Jacob Candelaria, always get his name jacked up there as our new caucus uh, person here. Interesting, youngest Senate, I'm sorry, youngest member of our legislature. Can it po be possible that Democrats have figured out you have to seed your own field early? <laughs> to get the careers going? This is an amazing choice to me. I, I'm really blown away by this. I think it is a really interesting choice for caucus chair. I yeah. mean, he's definitely not, uh, I mean, we couldn't possibly see a bigger change in the Senate mm -hmm. uh, from the old leadership to what it's going to look like now. Um, he is very liberal. He's mm -hmm. 25. He's uh, the first openly gay senator. He's extremely um, He's ex extremely new in, in this uh, position, and he's very energetic. Right. He's very yeah. uh, he's very warm and enthusiastic and mm -hmm. friendly and outgoing. Mm -hmm. Whether that translates into getting anything done, I have no idea. Sure. But sure. Um, it's a fascinating move on their part, yeah. I think. Javier, pick up on that if you would. This sure. is an interesting move, isn't it? And, and I'm wondering what it portends for the future as well. I think for it, him. it reflects the uh, the electorate, uh, mm -hmm. the energy uh, here in New Mexico that. Uh, New Mexicans will, you know, a lot of this is, is insider baseball in the mm -hmm. capital uh, mm -hmm. that um, people don't understand the mechanics about. But having two uh, fresh leaders who, um, you know, represent uh, positive change here in New Mexico and addressing uh, our desperate issues that we have with poverty, income inequality, 
um, the jobs crisis. New Mexico is pulling up the rear when it comes to uh, the Southwest uh, and, and all other states and how they're doing economically. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, these these uh, these leaders are going to take uh, take it to the governor on those issues, uh, and that's what uh, I think the caucus was going for. Mm -hmm. And your sense of that, Whitney, you've got these with these three names, and when you consider them all in, in this leadership uh, thing we've got going here, is this a problem for the governor? Is this just business as usual for the governor, as we were joking a little bit ago, or does this change the game for her in any possible way at all, dealing with these new faces? I, I, I think it's a spaghetti bowl right now, and, and anytime you have a situation like that, there's always opportunity and there's always risk. Uh, it's mm -hmm. an opportunity for the governor to um, lay some good foundational work um, with some of the new people that are coming in, uh, but she's going to remain committed. I, that's my understanding to uh, the agenda and the, and the policy initiatives that she has put to the front, you know, of her administration. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a fiscal house that's in order right now, which is fantastic. Washington, D.C. can't say that. Um, the Southeast is booming uh, with our oil and gas. Uh, it, um, obviously, there's a paper, an article in the paper today that we're producing more than we can even deliver, right. uh, which is really good news for the administration. Um, there, you know, you're going to see a, another address of uh, social promotion in schools. We had uh, Democratic senators that ran those bills uh, of that portion of the governor's agenda last go around. I don't know if you'll see that again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, a lot of tax policy issues. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the governor is going to have an agenda that the question is going to be, you know, how are the Senate Democrats and the Senate Republicans going to respond to that? And I, I think it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of different points of view. Good, it's interesting. I want to go back to uh, Senator Keller for a quick second on, on something that Whitney picked up on, and that is he's had his own ideas about jobs and how to get jobs moving, a jobs plan of some sort. I'm curious if in the chess match between Democrats in, leg in the legislature, House or Senate, but particularly the Senate, and the governor, is this an opportunity for Democrats to throw down a jobs program that the governor's going to then ha gonna have to match or trump? Do you see what I'm getting at here? He's, he's been out front on this issue on jobs for quite a while now. How does that change the game? Well, I think it elevates him to a more prominent position, y you know, and I'm sure he's happy to have uh, Senator Candelaria there being the younger guy now, right, right. you know, <laughs> because he was the, yeah, he was the kid in the Senate before. Right. Um, it, it's, it's quite a rapid rise for him, and I think it shows... Uh, having them choose him as the whip shows that they mm -hmm. want him to get out front and put some of those proposals out there. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have a lot of respect in the business community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, somebody's got to do something. I hope they come up with a proposal. I hope the governor comes That's to right. the table with a proposal. Can you do it, can you do it in 15? You bet. So right you have uh, Secretary uh, Barella mm -hmm. uh, and his jobs package. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Senator Sanchez and you have uh, Senator Keller. Uh, in order for something to get through up to the governor's office, you're going to need to have a real coalition of ideas and solutions for this economy that is uh, basically created by both sides. Interesting. Good point there. When we return, Albuquerque Mayor Richard Berry may look back at this era of being a golden era of his time in office. We'll tell you why.